In this video, we're going to attempt to finish out the last two drawings of our tiny home design in Revit 2025, serving as a tutorial for civil engineering and architecture. As we look at the next drawing that we're going to add in under Sheets All, I'm going to right click and select New Sheet, B11 by 17 horizontal, select OK. And this is this one here we're going to rename to B Sections. And with this, we're going to actually move to the floor plan view. I'm going to do the first one. And what we're actually going to take a look at is I'm going to, under the view tab, create a section. And it's going to be a cutaway view, so I'm actually going to draw, I'm going to draw a line through this wall. And I want to choose either the west or the east because it's going to have the, um, the sloped eave on the roof that we're going to label in our drawing. So I'm actually going to click, I'm going to draw through, and you're going to see, once I click on this side, I'm going to see this box that shows up. And anything inside of that box is going to show up in the view. So now if I go over into the project browser, I've got a sections option in here. And actually when I select, when I right click and say cancel twice, I can actually select that view and I actually want to change that from a building section over to a wall section. So that way it has it labeled correctly. So now our sections, wall section, if I double click on section one, I'm going to see that I got a crop region here. I'm actually going to adjust this up just a little bit. And you can see that there's like that topo solid and everything. We'll go ahead and I'm going to adjust this up just actually so that way the grade level is just in there. There's my floor and I'm going to drag this down so that way I can kind of see just a little closer. I do want to have more of the eave showing the outside edge of the roof. That looks good. And some things I don't need, like for example, this um, sofa doesn't need to be in in this view. And in fact, I'm actually going to drag this open just a little bit more because this to give us a little bit more of the view of our roof. So I'm going to right click on it. And I'm actually just going to say, hey, let's just hide in view elements because we really don't need to have that in there. I'm going to select the crop region, go ahead and hide it down here in my view. And what's going to happen is, is I'm actually going to move back to my sheet, A105 sections. I'm going to find that section view and I want to drag it over and drop it right here on the page. And I'm going to double left click to activate it, change my view scale to a half an inch equals a foot double left click and place again and make some adjustments if we need to the view label and make some placements here now usually what I like to do is I like to set this in either like shaded or even realistic would work fine too so I kinda like having some things like this so I'm going to go ahead and while I've got this open I'm going to go ahead and create labels for some of the things and add in some detail items. First thing I want to do is add in some detail components. So under the annotate tab, you'll actually see there's a component option which is called detail component. So I'm going to go ahead and, and if you choose one of them, I'm going to just use the detail component. Now the one thing you're going to notice is, is you got a windowsill that's double hung and everything like that some of the other components would be like for our lumber section dimension lumber section if i scroll up i've got a two by four so i'm going to select it i'm going to zoom in here and i'm going to see that hey here's the end of a two by four if i press my space bar i can rotate it i'm actually going to put it right down here in the bottom of this wall and probably let's check our view our view here let's do hidden line that probably shows up a little bit better i'm going to grow up here to the top I'm going to place two of these right at the top. So this is going to be what they call a double top plate. For my dimension lumber section, I'm also going to choose the 2x8. And the 2x8 is going to go right up here. If I put my cursor right on this line, I can press the space bar and it will turn it at an angle for me. And you can see it's going to per fit perfectly. So actually I want to be right here with that particular 2x8. Down here, I want to change this over to a 2x10 and make sure that I have my band board here for my flooring. Okay. So 
there's going to be some of the framing. Make sure your level of detail is set to fine. Some other things that may happen is that you have this option up here called Thin Lines. It's also here in the Annotate tab, so as well. And um, Or actually, it's on the View tab, I should say, the Thin Lines option. If you don't, you get these really thick, bolded lines. So I usually like to thin the lines. It makes it a lot easier to kind of keep track of all that stuff, So as far as that goes. All right, so here's what's going to happen is we're actually going to just end up putting in like for example uh, we've got some cathedral ceilings and everything going on here is I'm going to use under the annotate tab the text tool and I'm a label right here and click on the click on the option we're gonna go 2 inch by 10 inch floor joists at 16 inches on center OC so we're gonna put that little note in there another one the same kind of option while we have this open is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click inside of this portion this is going to be 2 inch by 8 inch rafters at 16 inches on center I'm gonna click I'm gonna rotate I'm gonna hit cancel to stop running the text tool and I'm going to rotate this and then move it into position. And that looks pretty good. All right, a few other options. I'm going to go ahead and use the insulation tool. I'm going to select the inside, the bottom of this top plate here. You get a midpoint triangle. Notice how the insulation width is three and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that down. So I click here, so there's my insulation put in. And then we do need some insulation to be represented for our in between our rafters. So I'm actually going to change this over to and a two by eight. These would be seven and a fourth. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And from this band board up, I'm gonna go ahead and place some insulation in there. And the text will kind of put that up there too. Okay. So as we go along, some things that we'll want to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose the text tool. Under the leader section, I want to choose two segments. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go ahead and start to label. So like here, this right here, I'm going to just go ahead and click and make a little band. This is going to be a 2 inch by 10 inch band board. And I'm going to click off of it to set it in there. And I'm just going to keep going on and naming what stuff that I have in here. So right above this, sitting on top of the floor, and I usually try to kind of line these up if I can. It's kind of a habit there. This is going to be 3 quarter inch plywood subfloor. On top of that, going to be three quarter inch oak flooring and as I kind of move up I'm going to end up having in my wall on the inside here this layer that's pointing to this is going to be gypsum wallboard we're going to have as we move forward in here we're going to have 2 inch by 4 inch studs at 16 inches on center in between there we have some bad insulation Within there, we're going to end up having some, in this case, I think it's only going to be going to be half inch uh, 
plywood sheathing. And then on the outside, we end up having half inch vertical wood siding. Okay. As we move to the top, we'll place some different uh, options here, such as we end up having the two by eight rafters there. We may want to go ahead and, and click and note that we've got some bad insulation. We've got our this one here looks like three quarter inch plywood sheathing for the roof. And then on the top, we have some asphalt shingles. Okay, we're gonna add a couple other little items in here later on, but other than that, we're looking pretty good as far as what we have labeled for what items that we, that we want to include. For our for our wall section, the one thing that we're going to notice, and even as I if I change my let's go into shaded, I think realistic just looks a little bit better here. There we go, and you can go ahead and you can have the realistic setting there. Go ahead and have it set up. If I double left click, here's my wall section. Half an inch equals a foot. All set up there. All all good. One thing I might notice is that I actually, when I go into my 3D view, I want to change the roof pitch. So if I select the roof, over here in my properties palette, I can see I had a 912 slope. I actually want to drop that down to a 512 and go ahead and hit apply. And that's going to kind of give us a little bit more of not such a tall ceiling in this case. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z because I want to show you what also you can do with this. So anytime I'm on a sheet, for example, with sections, maybe I want to make that adjustment here. If I double left click on, on the view to activate it and I select the roof, I can do the exact same operation. Here's the slope. And I can do a 512 slope and select apply. Now, the only thing is it's going to mess with some of our components that we had in, had in there. But that's okay, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and here's my my uh, board there. Let me pull that insulation and that label out. And we might have to just make some adjustments for some of those things. Okay, easiest thing to do is I'll select my detail component. I'm going to go ahead and select the align tool up here in the panel. We'll save. I'm going to go ahead and click on this line right here. And then I'm going to click on this edge. Notice how it lined that up for us. Then I can go ahead and I can kind of slide that down so that way it's right there on the edge. Same thing with my insulation. I can kind of drag him in. The little blue dot, I can put it right on the midpoint. If I go over to the other side, the other little blue dot, kind of line it up right here. And then the same thing, just make some adjustments with our text option here. Drag him in and rotate. Might have to select your your leaders and reposition or reshift some of your some of what you're pointing to. As far as your, your leaders go, I can select all of my leaders. So I'm going to hold the shift key to deselect that level line. But I've got all my leaders selected. And here's what you can do. So you can do uh, under the multiple align, you can align all these elements like to the left or align them all to the center, align them all to the right, which is what looks best to me. So notice how all the bins lined up there, all the arrows look in our good spots. Or you can distribute them horizontally, doesn't really look very good there, or vertically. So what I say is let's go to the right and let's see what we can do here. Sometimes we might have to just hit Control Z 
and we get too far where we can't salvage what we've done. So there we go. So notice if I click and hold down and select all these, I'm going to hold the shift key. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that aligning elements to the right. And that looks pretty good. So there's our section view. I can double left click off of that view. And in that way, we're good to go. All right, last couple things we'll put on this drawing are just going to be some interior elevations. or And so that's going to be by going back to the floor plan. Now, we can base those off of this floor plan or we can base it off the furniture plan. Might be better to place them off the furniture plan. I'm going to go back to the view tab. And under the elevation option, I just want to choose elevation. And notice how in the properties it wants to do a building elevation. Let's go and choose interior elevation. And it's going to give us a little circle with a, with a pointer on it. Whichever direction that's going, that's what it's going to look at. So for example, if I go down here, if I click here, I can click on it. And I can place an elevation like this. I can also go ahead and place an elevation kind of like this too if I, if I want to. So I'm going to right click and say cancel, stop placing those. Once I have them placed, I can always reposition them. And if you notice it has check marks around this one where I'm viewing. So then that way I can see what it is. So if I don't like the view, like maybe it's like, okay, I don't know if I want the view of the toilet, but maybe I want the view of the shower, then I can always uncheck what I don't want and it'll tell me that it's going to be deleted. So let me go and pull that in here and kind of show. Just see if I can get just this elevation marker here. So that looks pretty good. The other thing is, is clicking on the endpoint, you'll also be able to show what field of view that you're wanting to have. So now, if I go to any of those views in the elevations interior in my project browser, I can see there's what the interior elevation looks like there. And I can see this is what the interior elevation looks like in here. So pick out two elevation views. So again, you can always like set the, the detail to fine. Let's go realistic. And this one looks pretty good. When I look at the bathroom one, it needs us a little bit of adjustment on its crop region. And let's leave the roof the roof in there. There we go. And again, just kind of fine level detail, maybe realistic. And then I think we should be good to go. So you can always kind of again adjust the just the crop region to so that way it comes up to the finished floor. That looks pretty good. And same thing on this one. Looks like I might want to do There we go. I'm going to go back to the sheet, section sheet. I'm just going to drag those over and drop them. Maybe I want to rename elevation 1A to, to uh, living room. And elevation 1C to bathroom. But I'm going to drag these guys over and drop them onto the sheet. Just pick two views, pick two interior elevations that you're kind of proud of, and have them be represented on your drawing as part of your sections. So this will finish out uh, the sections drawing. The last one will be schedules, which we'll cover in the last video for our tutorial series on the tiny house design using Revit 2025.